Welcome to Wiggies. Today I'm going to give you a demonstration of what I saw in 1977 by Bobby Gore trying to explain how waterproof breathable materials function. In my opinion, not only are those claims bogus, but a lot of people have spent a lot of money um, on rainware which does does not function in any way, shape, or form the way all of the companies who sell waterproof, breathable materials claim. Also, we should use the term breathable. We should only use the term vapor permeable. And here we've got three burners and I'm gonna get the ball going here. This first container has just the Teflon film. The second container has the Teflon film laminated between a Trico material and I believe it's a ripstop nylon that's used by the military. And the third container has what I believe is the Teflon material that has been laminated or coated with urethane before it got laminated to the taffeta and the trico. And back in the early days, as I recall, Gore had a problem keeping the Teflon film smooth and so they applied the urethane to it to make it easier to laminate. Now whether that's factual or not, I don't know, but it that's that's what I know. Now, the idea is the water is going to boil and the steam is going to come up. It's going to go through the film and it'll condense on the glass. And the other containers will have considerably less of the steam coming through because of the fact that they have been laminated and the lamination is adhesive and the adhesive is clogging up the spaces between the yarns. It's clogging up whatever holes exist in the Teflon film. Now, I mentioned Gore simply because they were at the forefront of all of this. There are a number of companies today that produce Teflon film, that apparently laminate it, and there are companies that have other types of materials which they are applying to fabric and they make the same claim of having this fabulous capability of being waterproof and vapor permeable, which is simply not the case. Now, you can see how the water is boiling and the steam is beginning to build in here. And you can see how the steam is coming up. And over here, you can see there's, well, there is, you know, 
There is something coming up, but it is so limited. Now, when I saw Bobby do this exhibit, what I said to him is, I want to use your stuff, Bobby, but I'll only do it on one condition. I want to meet somebody whose rate of perspiration is comparable to the steam coming up off of boiling water. And obviously I never got an answer from him, and I never expected to. But you can see it's still coming up like crazy here, and almost nothing here. And this is what you can expect if you have clothing that has the film on it, that the moisture coming out of your body is simply not going to go through that material. I'm going to turn this off. Now here is one of my jackets which doesn't have any film on it at all. But if I were to put this jacket on and go out in the rain, or just go out when it's, say, 40 degrees and start hiking, all the moisture coming out of my body, all that moisture is going to have to go through the sweater that I'm wearing. Whatever I'm wearing, the moisture has got to go through in order to get to the jacket. And that's not going to happen. It's never going to get through the jacket because as that moisture comes out of my body as a vapor, it is going to condense, be absorbed by the first layer that it's hitting, which is in the case of what I'm wearing now, a sweater. It could be a shirt. It doesn't matter. Now, supposing it's two degrees. I'm now wearing an insulated garment. The moisture not only has to get through what I'm wearing against my skin, but it also has to get through the lining, the insulation, and the shell. And that, again, is simply not going to happen. So everybody that has purchased rain gear that is made with any sort of a film has for all intents and purposes, wasted a lot of money. Because you could go to a sporting goods store and buy urethane, urethane coated nylon rain garments for 20 or 30 or 40 dollars. That are going to do exactly the same thing as the 250 dollar or 300 dollar garment that's got these fancy branded stuff. <clears throat> now let's talk about footwear. Um, all the footwear or boot manufacturers in the world are using primarily Gore-Tex <clears throat> and they're combining it with Thinsulate. And this particular boot has a thousand gram per square yard Thinsulate. If I took a thousand gram polyester fiber of the lamellite that I use, and if you convert it to ounces, that's 35 ounces. And 35 ounces would be around five inches thick. Now, can you imagine trying to get it into this little space? Now, this particular boot, and I suspect that it's all of them, um, has a fabric that's laminated to what is known as a close I'm sorry, an open cell foam. The open cell foam is just like the foam that you use to wash dishes. It's a sponge. That in turn has been laminated to some sort of a film, which of course they say it's breathable, which it's not. And behind that is the Thinsulate. And every person that I've ever encountered that has Gore-Tex Thinsulate boots, regardless of the manufacturer, has cold feet. And the reason they have cold feet is all that moisture that they're generating out of their feet is staying in the boot. 
it gets cold. And once your feet get cold, the only way you'll get them warm is if you go into your house, take your boots off, and let your feet get dry. So <clears throat> that, in essence, is the reality of things referred to as waterproof breathable. It is a hoax. It's always been a hoax. It always will be a hoax. Thank you for your time.